Hey guys, this is Brent, the EdTech Principal from EdTech.tv. Uh, today we're going to do a review of the Pebble eWatch. Um, so before we get started, I just want to let you know that I'm actually going to film and edit this entire review with iMovie for the iPad. Uh, believe it or not, I've actually never used iMovie for the iPad before, and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to learn while doing. And you know, a little test-based learning can go a long way. Okay, so on to the review. Okay, so last week, after nearly a year of waiting, the Kickstarter super project uh, known as the Pebble finally made it to me. And in that time, serious rumors of an Apple Watch uh, started to surface. So some might have started to feel a little down about the Pebble, but I am not dismayed. Um, the Pebble is a stylish watch that communicates directly with your phone and which can be redesigned to fit your style. Uh, I actually just got a mail from the Pebble people uh, saying that the SDK for Pebble is being released and don't worry about what SDK means, but basically it just means that software developers can start creating their own uh, quote-unquote apps for the watch. Um, <clears throat> but at the moment the watch is actually limited to acting as, uh, well, a watch of course, and interacting with your phone on fundamental communications. So namely the telephone itself, uh, text messages, and email. Um, it also works with whatever music app you happen to be using. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at each of these. Okay, so the watch itself is actually uh, pretty simple and sleek. It has four buttons, uh, three on the right side and one over here on the left side. Um, the top left button right here, it can be thought of as kind of the home or back button. Um, so if I push it here, you can see that it takes me back to the main menu. Um, the middle button is the select button, so if I click on this one, text watch, it'll show me that. Um, the top button on the right and the bottom button on the left right are uh, scrollers, so I can scroll up and down through the different menu selections that it offers me here. Um, if you take a look on the left hand side, you can see that there's a charging port, and uh, I want to show you what the charger looks like here too. The charger is uh, this thing, so it's very unique looking. Um, it matches up, oops, sorry, that's the wrong way. It matches up perfectly with it and holds in. But as you can see, there is a downside to that, which it means that it's not something you can buy anywhere. And actually, right now, if you lose it, you're kind of out of luck. Um, but there is a real benefit to the, the way that they made this. And that benefit is you can dunk the watch in water absolutely no problems. It is waterproof to a certain degree um, and shouldn't give you any real problems. Okay, so one of the cool things about the watch is that you can actually choose the watch face that you want. So um, if I want to have kind of this uh, fuzzy time or classic analog watch, I can choose different ones depending on my mood and what kind of image I want to display. Um, it's a pretty nice little option there. Uh, but there's also a lot more, so if someone develops a different one, I can actually choose from the app and actually install it right here. Um, and so if I just go in here and I click Select Watch Faces, it gives me all these different options that I can install. Um, some of them are pretty funky looking, some of them are a little more traditional. Uh, but like, let's say I wanted to install this one that's available right now called uh, WordSquare. I can choose that right here, and it's actually loading from my phone onto the watch here, which is pretty nice. Um, so if I go back into the menu, you do have to go down below, but you can see that that's now available. It says Word Square, and now it says it is 22.4. So another cool thing is that when someone calls you on the phone, uh, the watch actually vibrates and tells you who is calling. Um, and uh, Another really interesting part about that is that you can use the Pebble to answer the phone itself. So I can see here I'm getting a phone call from Miyuki and I have the two options, either answer with the top button or decline with the bottom button. Right now I'm going to decline. Um, but please be careful, you actually cannot talk into the watch. Uh, this isn't Dick Tracy. It's more like an interface to your phone. So as long as you keep that in mind, um, you're going to be fine. Because I'm sure there are going to be people who are going to want this watch to replace their phone. But that is not what it does. 
I did find myself pleasantly fond of being able to view text messages right on the watch. I'd actually gotten used to having a phone in my pocket and not wearing a watch, but when short messages come through, uh, the convenience factor here really surprised me. So here I can see the message. It says, you know, here's from Yuki. Where do you want to eat? And it also comes through on my phone at the same time. But if I don't notice it on the phone, I definitely notice it on the watch. One thing to be careful of, uh, at the moment it seems to be limited to English and texts in other languages, at least definitely in Japanese, don't seem to come through. Here you can see that this message shows up here with Japanese, but here it's just blocked off. You can also set up the watch to receive emails in a similar fashion uh, as you did with the text messages. Uh, but I didn't set this up because I thought it would be a little bit annoying for me to get notifications every time an email comes through, as I do get a fair amount. You can see that I've got 63 waiting. Um, most of that's junk mail, but still. Uh, and I thought, you know, if being notified of my email is important to me, I could set it up. But for now, it's not really that big of a deal, and I'd rather just have that function off. This one is really cool. Now uh, you guys might have remembered that I reviewed the Jambox and I had the Bluetooth connection between the phone and the Jambox before, or the iPad and the Jambox. Um, I was really worried that if I'm connected to the Pebble by Bluetooth, then I wouldn't be able to play music through my car's Bluetooth system or through a speaker like the Jambox, um, which I reviewed before. Uh, but fortunately, it does seem to work with the two devices, and both at the same time, which is really cool. Uh, so let's say you're playing some background music in the classroom while the students are working on a project. If you're on the other side of the room, you can still use the pebble to pause or skip tracks right there without the distraction of pulling out your phone. Uh, this function got me really excited. So let's take a quick look at how it works. If you just click on the music on your phone and you start playing any music, I can actually go into the phone, or into the watch, on the music option and it'll tell me one what I'm playing but I can pause play I went on and skip tracks which is just super cool so one of the annoying factors that I did find was this message. Um, every once in a while when you're trying to switch apps or something like that, this little message comes up that says that Pebble would like to communicate with my, um, my watch. And it just really interferes with things. Uh, this is the one thing that gets in the way and uh, almost enough to make me not want to use it. So you either have to choose allow or ignore. And I don't know exactly what the difference is here. Um, whenever you hit allow, it opens up the Pebble app again and then it reestablishes the connection. So I think you have to hit it to make sure that your app and the uh, and the watch are communicating with each other. So that is one big problem. Hopefully that can get fixed in the future. The other thing that's been a uh, kind of a problem, or I don't know if it's a problem, but it's uh, been a little bit weird getting used to wearing a watch again. Uh, I kind of wonder if this is how people felt when they made the switch from pocket watches to wrist watches after World War I. Uh, still, you know, that part alone is just a matter of preference, and, you know, maybe you already wear a watch and it's not an issue for you, but it is something to think about. If you haven't been wearing a watch for a long time, and you're going back to putting on a watch, uh, it might feel a little awkward. So to tell the truth, one of the first things that I thought about when I saw this project on Kickstarter was that a lot of teachers probably have a phone basket or maybe a no-phone policy in their classes, but I've always felt there's kind of a double standard there when the teachers are trying to use their phones in class, even if it's for a legitimate educational or classroom purposes. Um, I thought the Pebble might be a stealthy way to kind of, you know, quote-unquote, have a phone without actually having it. Um, so... You look at it and it seems like it's pretty stealth, but I did find out pretty quickly that there's no real way to do this because the vibrate function alone on the watch is jarring and impossible to miss. Students across the classroom are definitely going to notice it. Um, on the other hand, you might keep your eyes peeled for students who think they're being particularly clever by wearing the pebble. Uh, so all in all, if you're interested in the pebble, you're not going to go wrong in ordering it, uh, but it's definitely not perfect either. If you go into it thinking of it as an interface between you and your phone and not as a replacement, then you'll probably be fine. 
Um, as always, I hope that this is useful, and if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments. Thanks, guys.